The game of poker is honestly not difficult. Most people these days massively overcomplicate a very simple card game. And what I have learned throughout my entire professional poker career is that there are a simple set of basic strategies that when applied consistently at the poker tables will get you winning poker results over a period of months. This video is not for you guys looking for a get rich quick scheme that's not what poker's about sometimes you're gonna lose in the short run i have losing days losing weeks and sometimes even losing months as all professional poker players do and if they try to pretend otherwise they are simply not being truthful to you but guys the simple strategies that i'm going to teach you in today's video you can take them to the tables right after you're done watching this and start making real profits for yourself over the course of months in years let's jump into it all right guys so first things first you need to start playing the right poker hands it still blows my mind that so many people these days play so many trashy hands at the poker table and they wonder why they do not get the success that they had hoped for in this game so guys i'm going to be brutally honest here only play the following hands on your screen pocket aces pocket kings pocket queens all the way down to pocket twos in addition to that play ace king ace queen ace jack ace 10 king queen king jack queen jack and only if they're suited play jack 10 suited 10-9 suited, 9-8 suited, 8-9 suited. Guys, I know this is boring. This might sound crazy to some of you guys who are newer to the game, but believe me, this is going to give you a strong mathematical advantage every single time you enter the hand of poker. There is no strategy that I or anyone else can teach you that can beat that. When you have the odds in your favor in this game, you're simply gonna win more. As you get more experience at the poker table, you can start adding more hands hands to this list but if you're struggling right now in poker you're not getting winning results just play these hands for now and your results are going to start improving by the way i have charts in my free poker cheat sheet which you can download if you want to study this in more detail I'll leave a link to that in the description below but let's move on to tip number two now and that is to always raise first in the pot so guys you never want to enter a hand of poker showing weakness believe me this is something that professionals like myself can sense right away when somebody does this and basically it's when they just limp into the pot i have talked about this in multiple videos here on the channel that you never want to do this you always want to raise it up instead because you want to take control you want to let people know hey i am serious about this hand of poker this is my pot and you are going to be a guest in my pot basically i'm going to be putting a lot of consistent pressure on you and we're going to talk about that more later on on the flop turn and river so let me give you an ironclad rule when you are the first person into the hand of poker into the pot you always want to raise it up this is a statistically proven winning strategy i actually put the evidence in my first poker book crushing the micro stakes i included samples of millions of hands that i played online just to prove it once and for all that it is absolutely much more profitable for you to raise when you enter the pot i don't have time to get into all that in this video but i'll leave a link to my first book in the description below but bottom line guys i would use three times the big blind as a default strategy so for example you're playing in a two dollar five dollar game five dollars the big blind my recommendation would be to raise it up to fifteen dollars when you enter the pot as a minimum and you can go for two points five times the blind so 1250 when you were attempting to steal the blinds but let's move on to tip number three now guys and that is to always pay attention to your position at the poker table so i'm going to put the image on your screen right now of the seats at the poker table and the main thing you guys need to understand is that the button and the cutoff are by far the most profitable seats at the table you will make the vast majority of your profits from these two seats and the reason why is very simple you get to act last on the flop turn and river which is once again a massively proven statistical advantage if you play online poker you can just put your hands in a poker tracking software like poker tracker and you can literally go see your results for yourself once again i will include links to the poker tracking software that i use in the description below but guys bottom 
line, when you get to act last in a game of incomplete information like poker, you are always going to have a strong statistical advantage. All poker players know this, so you want to play the majority of your hands when you are seated at either the button or the cutoff, the two most profitable seats at the table. All right, guys, let's move on to the post-flop streets now. Tip number four that I have for you is to always apply pressure on the flop. So we already talked about raising it up before the flop, and the reason why is because now we're going to keep our foot on the gas pedal. We're going to continue to make life difficult for them. And let me give you an example. So you raise it up with ace jack offsuit on the button. That's the ace of hearts and jack of spades and a tag, which stands for tight and aggressive player calls you in the big blind. So the flop comes down with a 10, five, four. We have hit precisely nothing on this board. However, when this player checks to us, what you want to be doing here, guys, is making a C bet, which stands for continuation bets. We are now continuing the aggression that we built before the flop. This is a very strong play in poker. This puts tremendous pressure on them to have a hand. And remember that statistically two out of every three times they have missed the flop as well. Well, so we can simply go ahead and make a bet here of around 50% of the pot. So for example, the pot's $10, you bet $5. When you apply this strategy consistently, you are going to get folds out of them most of the time here. And this in a nutshell, guys, is the definition of winning poker when you can get people to lay down their hand when you have nothing. All right, but what if they call you on the flop? Let's go talk about the turn now, tip number five, and that is to follow up on some turn turn scare cards. So you got called, what do we do now? Well, what you want to do guys is you want to double barrel on the turn specifically on what I call scare cards. And those are precisely cards like an ace, a king, or a queen that come on the turn or river. And the reason why we call them scare cards is because when we raise before the flop, those are the kind of hands that they're putting us on. They're putting us on hands like ace king or ace queen or king queen. So therefore, when these cards come on the turn or river, it makes sense in their mind that we're going to have these cards and therefore we can continue representing these and often get them to throw away a better hand. Let me give you an example. Once again, you raise it up in the cutoff with 10 nine of hearts. A tag calls you in the big blind. So the flop comes down with the queen of clubs, eight of hearts and three of diamonds. So not a terrible flop. We do have a backdoor flush draw and we do have a gut shot straight draw. So if it came with a jack, for example, we would hit our inside straight. And if it came heart heart on the turn and river, we would make the flush. But the reality is here, guys, we don't really have a whole lot on this board. But once again, you guys already know they checked to us. We're going to make a bet on the flop. So once again, we're going to assume that they call and the turn comes down with the king of diamonds. Guys, when they check here, you want to make a strong double barrel in this situation. You've raised pre-flop, you've bet the flop, and now you're going to bet the the turn. This is called a double barrel. This is one of the strongest plays in the entire game. And the reason you want to do it specifically on this card is because once again, this king will be scary for them. This represents one of those cards that is in our likely range. So guys, the other important thing here is I will usually bet 75% of the pot this time. So for example, the pot's $20. I'm going to bet $15 here. And the reason why is because I want to give them even more of a reason to fold here. I want to let them know, hey guys, I am very serious about this hand. This is starting to get very expensive for you. There's going to be another big bet coming on the river. You need to fold your hand right now. And luckily, that's often what they will do. All right, guys, let's move on to tip number six now. And that is to don't hero call versus the nits. So guys, the nits, the rocks, these are the tightest players at the table. These are the players who are literally sitting around waiting for pocket aces, pocket kings. They're trying to hit an overpair on the flop. They're trying to hit a flush. They're trying to hit a straight three of a kind you guys get the idea so people often ask me what do you do when you get raised well guys versus the tight players in particular when you have nothing at all or just one pair these are the players you want to make the fold against so this means tags and nits in particular because guys when they raise you on the turn or river which is what i call the big money streets believe me they are not bluffing you these players play very robotically especially
especially in today's games, you can actually check their raise flop percentage or even their raise turn percentage, depending on which street you are. If you're using a HUD, once again, I will link up the HUD that I use for online poker in the description below. But if their raise percentage is 15% or less, this indicates exactly this kind of passive player type who is only going to make a raise against you with the nuts or some sort of monster draw. So guys, do not fall into this common trap versus these player types who are literally never bluffing in a situation like this. When these tighter passive players raise you, especially on the turn or river, they are almost never bluffing. If you have nothing at all or even some sort of pair or even an over pair, it is likely that your hand is no good. They are often representing two pair or better. Always be aware of the player type you're up against. By the way, I discuss this in extensive detail in my new Elite Poker Training University, 50 plus videos of advanced poker training, 17 plus hours of lessons. I break down all of my five major poker player types for you. I show you the cutting edge strategies to beat these players in today's games. I have just opened up enrollment. I will leave a link to that in the description below, but let's move on to tip number seven now, and that is to use exploitative bet sizing. So guys, I have said it again and again. I'm a little bit of a contrarian in the poker community. Do not use GTO style bet sizing in low stakes games. You are literally shooting yourself in the foot because you are trying to play a mathematically balanced play style against non on thinking recreational players. Instead, you want to be using exploitative bet sizing like I talk about in all of these videos. We've already discussed it in today's video. We talked about betting 50% on the flop and 75% on the turn. Guys, bottom line, you do not want to be balancing anything versus weaker poker players who are not paying attention in small stakes games, which is the vast majority of them. You are only costing yourself money. Save the GTO for mid or high stakes versus good players who will actually understand what you're doing. So for example, you should often value bet big versus the fish. I will, for example, often bet 80% or more when I have a very strong hand. And when I'm bluffing, I will often just bet 40% or even less to give myself a cheap price to make them go away. I literally wrote an entire book about this. It's called Crushing the Micro Stakes. And this is the reason why I have some of the highest winnings of all time, especially in the small stakes games online. I did not achieve those results by playing a GTO strategy. That is simply a suboptimal strategy in those games. You want to be using exploitative bet sizing, especially against the weaker players, but let's move on to tip number eight now, guys, and that is to bet or raise with your draws. So guys, good players don't just call with their draws because they know that that only gives you one way to win. You always wanna give yourself multiple ways to win in poker. Let me give you an example. You've got ace 10 of hearts. The flop comes down with the ace of hearts, four of spades and king of hearts. You check in a lag, loose and aggressive player makes a bet. What should you do in a spot like this? Guys, you want to be check raising here and leading any turn. And the reason why you wanna do this is because this is simply going to give you more paths to success in this hand. Number one, you can make them fold right now. That's always an awesome thing in poker. If you just call here, you're not gonna make them fold. The other thing is when you check raise here, you are taking back the betting lead in the hand. You are putting them on the back foot and you are telling them, hey, I'm in charge of this hand. I am gonna dictate the way this hand is played and I'm gonna force you out of the pot later on. And I love to do it specifically with a hand like this where we don't actually have a ton. We do have the nut flush draw, but if this player, for example, decides to go all in on the flop, I'm not gonna be crying about having to throw away my hand here. Whereas if I had a hand like King Queen, for example, which is a much higher value hand in this situation, that's a much more difficult spot. So guys, with your draws in particular against bluff heavy player types like the loose and aggressive, an excellent strategy is to play these hands very aggressively, give yourself more ways to win the pot, and you're going to have a lot more success. All right, guys, my number one tip that I have for you is to 
simply have fun. Guys, too many people these days take this game way too seriously. Guys, believe me, from my 10 plus years as a professional, I have had countless ups and downs in this game. I have gone through stretches for weeks or even months at a time where it felt like I would never win another hand again. And it is only by keeping it lighthearted and learning to take all the bad beats and the adversity in stride in this game that has kept me playing, that has kept my sanity and allowed me to become a long-term winner. You need to understand that you can never win every single hand. They are going to get lucky against you again and again. This is simply how the game is set up. It's how it is meant to be so that the bad players can get lucky sometimes, which allows them to keep coming back for more, putting more money into the game, which ultimately fuels your profits. Guys, never take yourself too seriously in this game. Use the simple tips in this video and you're going to have success over the long run. All right, guys, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you want to know my entire strategy to start beating the small and mid stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That will be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.